Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel on Feynman integration. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, we're going to be evaluating an, evaluating an integral that can be solved using traditional methods. Um, the integral is the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine to the 8th x dx. Like I said, you can solve that using traditional methods. Um, the best method would be, well, the best method is the method I'm going to show you, in my opinion. The second best method would probably be the reduction formula, but uh, th this is like a 45 minute to an hour long problem by hand. Um, it's a lot of writing, a lot of room to make mistakes, and in my opinion, uh, the method I'm going to show you that uses the Leibniz rule is a little bit easier. Okay, so there's our integral. Um, the first thing that I want to do is make a substitution. Uh, my motivation for doing that is because usually with the Leibniz rule, you either like bounds of integration from 0 to 1 or 0 to infinity, or, so, or negative infinity to infinity, or negative 1 to 1, uh, things like that. I'm not, I'm not saying there aren't other, um, there aren't instances where those won't be the bounds of integration. Um, I'm sure you can look on the internet and find some, and I'll probably be doing some in later videos as I learn more about this myself. Um, but anyway, that was my motivation for making the following substitution. The substitution I make is that x is equal to the inverse tangent of u, therefore dx is equal to 1 over u squared plus 1 du. Um, now, uh, when, you, when you make that substitution, what you get is the following, that i is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over u squared plus 1, all to the fifth du. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you kind of how I did that. Um, so the bounds of integration should be obvious. Um, if you have x equal to 0, you know that u is equal to 0, because 0 is equal to the inverse tangent of 0. And if you have x equal to pi over 2, you will get u is equal to infinity, because the uh, inverse tangent of infinity is equal to pi over 2. So uh, that's how I got my bounds of integration. Um, now, going from there to there is a little bit trickier, um, but I'll show you how I did it. So what I'm going to do is, uh, so we need to find out what, in our substitution, we need to find out what cosine to the eighth of the inverse tangent of u is. And that's, that's not actually as bad as it probably seems. Uh, I'm going to show it here since it's not that well known an identity. But anyway, um, so... To start off with, we'll just we'll find the cosine of the uh, inverse tangent of u and then raise it to the eighth power. That'd be the easiest thing to do. Um, so the cosine of the inverse tangent of u, like I said, that's that's not a well-known identity. It is equal to one over the square root of u squared plus one, but I'll show you how I got that. So what I want to do is I want to set up a triangle right here, a right triangle, as you typically use in uh, in trigonometry. Um, with angle equal to the inverse tangent of u. You can see that right here. Here's our angle, and the angle is the inverse tangent of u. Um, now, we need, to, we need to set up that, that right triangle so that it will be valid. Well, what do we know about the inverse tangent of u? Well, we know that if we take the tangent of the inverse tangent of u, we get u. So that's how I'm going to get my first two sides of the triangle. We know that the tangent of the inverse tangent of u is u. So we have it right here. The tangent, which is the opposite side over the adjacent side, is equal to u over 1, which is u. Therefore, the triangle setup is valid. Um, now we can fill in our hypotenuse using our Pythagorean theorem. Um, and you get the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of u squared plus 1. But since we were not interested in the tangent of the arctangent of u, we wanted the cosine of the arctangent of u. Well, we still got the same triangle, so we'll just, what's the cosine? 
it is of, of uh, this triangle. The cosine of this triangle is 1 over the square root of u squared plus 1. So we have that the cosine, this over this, of this angle right here is equal to that. I hope, uh, I hope that makes sense to all of you. And by the way, that can be used, this same method and setup can be used to find um, the trig identity of the inverse trig identity of x um, anytime you want. You do, you do the same setup, um, it'll work every time. Um, so anyway, we have, we, now we know this. So since we know this, we know what the cosine to the eighth of tangent inverse of u is, and that is 1 over u squared plus 1 to the fourth. Um, and I didn't show the rest of the steps. Um, now that I've explained that, it should be pretty obvious how you get to there. So now we have two different expressions for i. Okay, now comes the Leibniz rule. What we're going to do is we're going to create a function of t that is uh, f of t, and it's equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over x squared plus t dx. Um, and that can be evaluated using uh, traditional methods. And what you get if you do so is you get that f of t is equal to pi over 2 times t to the negative 1 half. Um, ignore this. This is, this is not true. Hold on, let me, uh, let me get that erased for you really quick. All right. Give me one second. Obviously, you can see that uh, f evaluated at the point 1 is in no way equal to i. Anyway, um, so now we have f of t being equal to this being equal to this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to apply the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral side one, two, three, four times. Um, you can see steps one, this is the first derivative of f of t. You get negative integral zero to infinity of one over x squared plus t all squared dx. And that is equal to the derivative with respect to t of this, which is pi over 4 times t to the negative 3 halves. And this kind of looks like I wrote pi over 4t to the negative 3 halves, so I'm going to rewrite that again, too. Sorry about that, guys. This is... Negative pi over 4 times t... To the negative three halves, and again, that this is a this is a negative sign there. And then, if you differentiate that with respect to t again, you'll get uh, f double prime of t is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of two over x squared plus t cubed dx. Um, do do this yourself um, if if you want to check my calculations there. I've I've checked them and double checked them triple check them. It, it's true. Um, these are pretty simple derivatives to take. Um, derivatives themselves are, are very easy things to do. It's just calculation. If you know how to do, if you know the chain rule and all the other stuff that goes with derivatives, uh, you can do, you can differentiate any function pretty easily. Um, but anyway, you can see what I'm doing. I'm differ differentiating this with respect to t and differentiating this with respect to t four times. And what you get uh, if you do that is the following, that f quadruple prime of t is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of 24 over x squared plus t all to the fifth dx. Now that should look pretty familiar. That's almost this. That's just 24 times this. So, stepping over here, we can see that f quadruple prime evaluated at the point t equals 1, if we plug in a 1 there, we're going to get 24 times i. That should be easy to see. Um, 
and that's going to be equal to what you get if you plug in t equals 1 here also, which is 105 pi over 32. But we're not interested in what 24 times i is, we're interested in i. And what you get if uh, you divide both sides of that equation by 24 and then reduce is that i is equal to 35 pi over 256. So that's it. Um, in my opinion, that's a, a much nicer way to evaluate that integral uh, than, than the reduction formula, or you know you can you can do that with integration by parts too. I suppose you know making that cosine to the sixth x times one minus sine squared x, and it's but that that'll be a mess. That's, it's just a huge mess, and I think this way is much nicer. And also, you can kind of see, using this method, you can create some, some neat formulas. Um, because, you know, you don't, you don't need to plug in 1 for t. You can have, you know, 2 or, or 3. And also, um, you can write f of t equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of x squared plus t squared. And get some pretty nice, uh, pretty nice identities that way. Also, uh, try it out for yourself. I'm not going to do it here, but um, I don't know. I thought that was a pretty neat application of the Leibniz rule. Hope you enjoyed that.